So shall we start? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, Assalamu alaikum again uh, to all the participants, to our elder and younger brothers, Abis. Uh, so we are following up with the discussion we had for the last two weeks, uh, which was about Vesvese and five cures for five of the heart's wounds. And this is the part three of this discussion. Uh, Colin Hojan was uh, absent last week but due to his COVID situation. Uh, hope, uh, Alhamdulillah, he's back. Uh, Colin Hojan is joining us from United Kingdom, Durham, I guess. And Harun Hojan is still in Turkey. He actually uh, uh, resides in Mississippi, I suppose. And I am from Düzce, Turkey. Uh, and we will follow up with the uh, fourth aspect of this chapter of Risale uh, 21st, 3rd, and 2nd chapter. Auzu billahi minash shaitan rajim, bismillahir rahmanir rahim, walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulina muhammadin, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Fourth aspect. This is a wasfasa arising from searching for the best form of, a, of an action. Supposing it to be fear of Allah, the more rigorous it becomes, the more severe the condition becomes for the person. It even reaches the point that while searching for even better forms of action, he deviates into what is unlawful. Sometimes searching for an act which is sunnah makes him give up what is obligatory. He says, I wonder if my act was sound and repeats it. This state continues and he falls into terrible despair. Satan takes advantage of this state of his, of his and wounds him. There are two cure, cures for such a wound. So this is the situation uh, a believer is in sometimes. Uh, this is this uh, appears to be a psychological uh, state, I think, uh, and this is a, an opportunity for Satan to play with the believer. Uh, to deviate him from the right path. Uh, so, Colin Hocam, would you like to uh, summarize or give your uh, thoughts about I can, this? I, I can have a try. I wasn't here last week, so I, I can't uh, build on anything that was said last week. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as this fourth aspect is concerned, it, it seems to me, hearing it again for the first time after quite a while, is that the fourth aspect is talking about perfectionism mm -hmm. and the desire to do one's very best at what one does. And I think that perfectionism, you know, people often um, complain that they can't get things done because they are perfectionists. Uh, or actually, they don't actually complain, but uh, people complain about them usually mm -hmm. saying that you know they try to do something which is absolutely unsurpassable um uh, you know is something that's absolutely immaculate without any kind of deficit and there is uh, something of a trick in there that shaitan tries to make us think that this is coming from us and that mm -hmm. there is an inherent goodness in it as you'll see there is a mention of the mutazilites afterwards yes it, it, uh, I have a bit of a bit of a problem with that because I don't think the Mutazilites are completely wrong, mm -hmm. um, but I don't think that they give us the full picture. But in any case, um, perfectionism, thinking that the since it, it, the act is a perfect act in theory, then my performance of that act must also be perfect. The fact is that perfection doesn't come from us and. Perfection doesn't come from things themselves without Allah actually decreeing that they are perfect. 
So I think there is um, a little self-delusion here. When we're trying to uh, do something ab absolutely perfectly, first of all, we have to reconsider the act. No act is itself perfect. Acts are made perfect through a sacred intention. They only become as good as the intention. Mm -hmm. And if our intention is to actually do things as perfectly as possible, we have to beware that we may be fooling ourselves into thinking that this perfection is somehow coming from us or somehow that that perfection will be, mm -hmm. will be chalked up to us and will be um, attributed to us. Mm -hmm. And this is a problem because we are not perfect. Mm -hmm. We are nothing. We have nothing. We are nothing. So we cannot do perfect things. Khair is from Allah. Creation is from Allah. All things which are created are from Allah. Nothing is from us. No creation is from us. So this desire to do something that is absolutely perfect, which we call perfectionism, um, is, is problematic. And actually, it can, it can prevent people from acting. Not only can it make them do things which are wrong in this, you know, this ceaseless desire for perfection, as it says in the text, they may actually be forced to abandon the, the, the fars for the sake of the sunnah. Um, and, 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 and that is, is crazy, you know. Um, we are here to do the fars um, to the best of our ability. And if we can do the sunnah as well, fine. But expending energy in order to perfect something that's not even fars, and then abandoning the fars, and then also worse than that, falling into this, this delusion that perfection is coming from us, then it just leads to one um, act of desperation after another, and we, we start to despair because perfection does not lie in our grasp, you know. Perfection is from Allah, not from us. So if we keep failing, then we start to become despondent and unhappy about it. Uh, we, we lapse into despair, and then the game is up. So we have to be very, very careful when we, when we think that we are doing things. Um, things are being reflected through us. And perfection doesn't come from us. Yes. So I think uh, some, you know, as you have, uh, you know, pointed out uh, in in daily life, there is also perfection perfectionism that people, uh, uh, some people have uh, dealing with, and that's the source of it may be different than uh, what is happening here. So in daily life, maybe it's because uh, a person might be uh, have some egotistic, uh, you know, uh, inclinations. And he he might or he or she uh, might say, "Oh, I am a, a great person, so whatever comes out of my actions should be perfect." Kind of mentality might be the case, uh, and he tries to or he or she tries to perfect himself in every action he does. But here, might be the source, the intention may might be coming from a, a state of mind that suggests. Uh, you know, I want to please God as much as I can. Uh, maybe this is related to it. Maybe something a little bit different. Uh, so he's trying to, he, he's aware of his weakness. Maybe he feels so weak that he's trying to please Allah in the best way possible. And he's aware that he's not able to do it. And he's trying hard and hard and every time. And then he becomes exhausted at, at some point and then at, get tired and he might lead to a deviation with the help of Satan. Uh, that comes, that might be the state of uh, mind of uh, a person in this particular case. So this is might be another form of vesvesa. It definitely is. And I think that, mm -hmm. you know, we have to, there are two perspectives here. One is the notion that we can do things perfectly, you know, in order to please Allah, whatever the, the, the intention is. And usually the intention is to please Allah, we think. But the other, you mentioned it yourself now, you said perfect ourselves. Mm -hmm. The notion that we can perfect ourselves, I think, is included in this fourth aspect. Mm -hmm. And that is doubly um, delusional because we, th that we don't have anything that we can perfect. What yes. do we have that we can perfect? We don't have anything, you know. If you have something, you know, you can, you can perfect it. If you have a muscle, you can strengthen it. You can make it bigger, right? Mm -hmm. But even that muscle isn't from you anyway. But we don't have anything, you know, we, we don't have anything at all. 
Um, if we had something, then we could say, yes, I'm going to try to perfect myself. And I see now that most of our, um, that most of the teachings that we see um, fr from our present day ulama are predicated on the notion that we have to self-perfect. Mm -hmm. I hear people saying, well, you know, we don't, we, we can't uh, establish an Islamic government until we've perfected ourselves, but you can't perfect yourself. You can't mm -hmm. do it. Uh, or tells us you can't perfect yourself. You know, it says, don't try to perfect yourself. You can't do it. Or start tells us we can't perfect ourselves because we don't have the capital. You know, you can only build on the capital that you have. You have to have money in the bank to be able to grow that money. But we don't have any money in the bank, metaphorically speaking, mm -hmm. because we don't have anything. Yeah. So, Harnojan, what is your uh, take on this? Uh, so these are wonderful points and um, these are just um, the most important points I think in the fourth aspect I was just um, maybe we will get into the remedies but I immediately thought about how the religion should be about easiness so I think in this fourth aspect um, the person with Vespas of this type is having a hard time and I think this is the first thing. Religion cannot give anyone hard time. It's it's based on easiness. This is this is somewhat a principle. So as we will see in one of the remedies to cure this uh, vesvese. Uh, so I think at this point we can see maybe this condition. People with this condition are in hard time, and we can see how hard this condition on them. Uh, and it looks really bad, you know, and it just prevents maybe connecting to uh, society uh, in in many ways. Uh, and also maybe in in this type, I'm telling as a per uh, to a per as if I'm you know totally free from this, but maybe sometimes I'm also you know uh, afflicted with this type of vesvese. Uh, because you never know there are different levels of this type of vesvese and maybe in different situations but what i'm really saying is uh, i think this is teaching me that religion is really uh, based on easiness if religion makes things hard for me most likely it's not the religion it's how i understand the religion and it is how i practice the religion based on how i perceive it so this kind of calibrates my um, judgments or understanding of the religion um, at this point, I would say. Yeah. So there are some scholars, ulema, as uh, Corinne Hocam suggested, uh, sometimes they go a little hard on people uh, to make them perfect Muslims, and it doesn't work, and people say, oh, oh this is the situation, the, the person he is describing as a Muslim uh, is so you know elevated and there is a difference between my state in my daily life and this person is depicted in his, his scholars you know uh, speak speech and there is uh, you know a, be a huge gap so you know that might uh, lead people to you know uh, despair uh, in this case so there is somebody raising hand i see here in this uh, you know among participants kadir akbalık uh, Kadir Abe, is he, does he want yeah. to speak? Yeah, can you can you hear me, please? Yes, yes. Abe, ahead, I, please. Also, I also believe that, as brothers um, here said, that we, we, we sometimes cannot arrange the, the balance in our life. For example, it comes to my mind uh, with, with this kind of here, as you mentioned, to, uh, to get the consent of Allah, sometimes we cannot reach the true balance. And also I remember in another part of the Risale, you know, mentions that your attitude in a way, it, it will be suitable for one of the masses, for example. Even if you are the member of Shafi, maybe if you are having a problem about this kind of ablution or other things. So sometimes you try to be yourself really more concentrating on the evolution or other things, maybe because of the West, West, eh? but finally you understand that you are um, getting tired, exhausted because of these things. And also Harun Abi says that the, the purpose of the religion makes you happier and easier your life. But this West, West, West makes you 
more difficult or makes you more exhausting about that. So as Ustaz says that your attitude in a way uh, meets one of the uh, mezhab, even if you are the member of Shafi, for example. So just continue and sometimes do not think about these things too much and pay attention to balance about that. Yes, yeah, that's right. Thank you, Kadir Abi. Allah razı olsun. So let's continue with uh, the first cure, inshallah. And the first cure, Vesvese like this are worthy of the Mutazilites because they say actions and things for which a person is responsible are either of themselves and in regard to the hereafter good and because of this good they were commanded or they are bad and because they are bad they were prohibited this means from the point of view of reality and the hereafter the good and bad in things is dependent on the things themselves and the divine command and prohibition follows this According to this school of thought, the following vesvese arises in every action which a person performs. I wonder if my action was performed in the good way that in essence it is. While the true school, the Sunni school says, Almighty Allah orders a thing, then it becomes good. He prohibits a thing, then it becomes bad. So let me read this again. I think that will make it clearer. From the point of view of reality and the hereafter, the good and bad in things is dependent on the things themselves. This is the Mutazili uh, idea. That's their thought. The good and bad in things is dependent on the things themselves. And the divine command and prohibition follows this. According to... To this school of thought, the following vesvese arises in every action which a person performs. I wonder if my action was performed in the good way that in essence it is. While the true school, the Sunni school says, Almighty Allah orders a thing, then it becomes good. He prohibits a thing, then it becomes bad. That is, goodness becomes existent through command and badness through prohibition. They look to the awareness of the one who performs the action and are established accordingly. And this good and bad is not in the apparent face which looks to this world, but in the face that looks to the hereafter. So this is a little bit uh, complicated. And then Ustad gives an example. So let's read the example then shall we discuss, I think. Uh, for example, you performed the prayers or took the ablutions of this uh, wudu, and there was a cause that of itself would spoil them. But you were completely una unaware of it. You took the ablutions and there was a cause that of, that of itself would spoil them. The, it will spoil uh, your ablution, but you were completely unaware of it. Your prayers and ablutions, therefore, are both sound and accept acceptable. However, the Mutazilites say, in reality, it was bad and unsound. But it may be accepted from you because you were ignorant and did not know, so you have an excuse. Therefore, according to the Sunni school, do not say about an action which is conformable with the externals of the Sharia, I wonder if it was sound. Do not have wesvese about it. Say, was it accepted? Do not become proud and conceited. So let's discuss this uh, example and explanation. Uh, what did it take? What we can take out of this? So, Colin Ojam, would you like to share your take on this? I think what is happening here is um, the Mutazilites believe that things are in and of themselves bad or good. Mm -hmm. So they have, um, they say, the goodness and the badness is inherent. And then because of that, Allah decrees them uh, haram and halal accordingly. Whereas uh, what Ustad is saying here is that according to Ahl-Sunnah, 
uh, or at least to the Asherite school, um, the, the truth is that Allah decrees something and then it becomes bad and it becomes good. Um, so he decrees what uh, he, he, he tells us to do what he decrees is good and to abstain from what he decrees is bad. And he says that it is good and bad because Allah says so. But actually, in fact, I think that the truth of the matter is something between these two things. The Mutazilites incorrectly believed that things are good and bad inherently. And then because of that, Allah decrees them. Um, either ha haram or halal, but there is no um, following on, if you see what I mean. It's not that Allah sees something is good and bad and then uh, decrees it halal or haram. The two go together. They are haram and halal, yes, because Allah decrees, but also because he knows that they are, they are, are bad. For example, lying is bad. Lying is essentially bad. Um, untruth is essentially bad because it's 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 Adam, it's non-existent. So how can it be good? But to lie occasionally, for example, to save your life, if you tell a white what they call a white lie, then you're not going to be punished for it because then that notion that it is bad is going to be in abeyance. It's not going to be um, uh, considered. So you know, I think the truth of the matter is 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 between Mutazilism and Asharism. It's not as the Mutazilites thought, and it's not exactly as the Asharites thought. It's somewhere in between. Allah is Hakim. And, it, you know, if, if he is telling us that to lie is bad, it is because it's bad. And his decree and the badness of lying go together. So you can't say that one follows the other. You can't say that things become bad because Allah decrees them or become good because Allah decrees them. Because if Allah decrees lying to be good, we know that this is batil. We know that lying is never good inherently, only under certain circumstances. You know, Adam is always Adam. Non-existence is always non-existence. It cannot be good. Non-existence is never good. But in a relative sense, it can be, which is why, you know, we have to be very careful here not to become totally mutazilite, and not to go to the other extreme and become totally Asharite. I think the truth of the matter, um, in, in, like in most contested issues, is somewhere in between. So here, um, what the Mutazilites are saying is that, you know, for example, you, you want to pray, and there was something that made your prayers invalid, even though you didn't know about it. Uh, therefore, your prayer was invalid. Now, Ustad is saying, no, this is not the case. You were unaware of it. You are unaware of that cause. And so your prayers are sound and acceptable, even though there was something which would spoil it and of which you were unaware. The Mutazilites say, no, actually, your prayers were invalid. They were bad. But uh, it may be accepted because you were ignorant of them. So this is a very, um, a very extreme uh, position to take because for the Mutazilites, you know, it, 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 they are saying that the prayer was invalid. Now, if you're telling that to someone who is a bit of a perfectionist and who is, you know, open to waswasa, that's going to send them into, you know, a kind of tailspin of desperation. They're yes. going to say, well, I, I, I can never do anything right because there was, you know, and there may always be something which is invalidating my prayer. So they start to surmise this. They start to imagine that maybe there will, there is always something which is invalidating and they're unaware of it. So they may never have a prayer that's accepted. And this mm -hmm. can quickly become um, desperation. And this is what Ustad is telling us to beware. Yes. Harnojan, what's your thought? Uh, for this cure, uh, what takes my interest is the perspective. Uh, I see that this, for instance, I wonder if it was sound. This question is a perspective. So this perspective is not appreciated here. And actually, we can understand the reason. It seems like I'm, again, relying on myself because I'm trying to perfect myself, as uh, you and Colin Hoja mentioned uh, at the you know, start. Here, with this perspective, I indirectly imply that actually I can perfect myself or I can perfect my action. So under this question, we can see this perspective. And 
what is wrong here is the per- perspective itself regardless from which school of thought is having this uh, this is a wrong somewhat wrong perspective as we can understand clearly um and the other perspective was it accepted actually this is very humble and when i hear this question actually i i just understand that i have arts you know i have importance and i know that i have no ability i have no nothing good in and of in myself or in my actions whatever good comes from allah created you know i have no um, no interference with creation anything good so this small question actually includes a perspective where i position myself powerless important and you know at a position uh, to be accepted or not i'm not valuing anything you know uh, to say that it can get better i'm just in the first place accepting that nothing is in my hands so um, oh allah did you accept my worship or prayer so i think this this really compares two different perspectives yes so both the mutazilit position uh, so the mutazilit position takes uh, a person that has vesvese to uh, despair uh, and uh, the position of the sunni school uh, gives hope to a person uh, because the, what's important is the decree of allah Uh, and Allah, also, uh, yeah. and also, I want to mention this. Uh, it says, you know, do not become proud. So the first perspective actually mm-hmm. uh, can take to a proud yeah. condition. Yes. So proud, proud, being proud, you know, it's it's problem. It's problematic in, in the first place. So it looks like it is comparison between you know, Uj and we are talking about desperateness on one side, but the other ex- extreme is you know being proud of whatever you are doing. So in perfectionism, actually, it can take me uh, to some place where I will feel maybe in like directly proud of myself. Like, you know, I'm perfecting my prayer. Maybe still I'm trying to perfect more and more, but inside maybe my Ene is feeling proud. Like, look at that. You are doing mm-hmm. better. You are doing greater. So it, it takes you uh, where Satan wants you to be looks like yes that's important uh, point to you know if, if from the passage that the way that it's described about mutazilites uh, it suggests the idea that mutazilites uh, say uh, a person creates their own actions is that the case am i reading it right uh, if yes, that's yeah. Yeah. yeah if that's the case that's a really a dangerous position to take because uh, only allah creates things we cannot create anything we just intend to do something and allah creates a reaction uh, and then if the mutazili position as harun hocam suggested uh, may lead to a very uh, sh- a shirk position a position of you know you're uh, putting partners to allah and that partner in this case is yourself uh, and that's really a dangerous position to take so kadir uh, akbalık wants to take Uh, he's raising a hand. Go ahead, Kadir Abi. Yeah, I, I believe that here our purpose is to obey the rules. That Islam has some rules for us. And when we obey the rules, we really become happy about that. I want to give an example. In Turkey, most of the people, for example, maybe do not know. Uh, sorry, I don't want to say do not know. Maybe do not re- recite the Quran properly. But still they are trying to continue their prayers, uh, prescribed prayers. But if you have a vesvesa about that, and if you always say that, is it accepted? Is it sound? Or this kind of things, you cannot continue your life. Or another way, if you are proud about that, you are a very good reciter, this is also very dangerous because you lose maybe your ikhlas when you recite Quran. So again, it comes to the same point. So the balance, because the people, he do not have too much wisdom or information about that, but still they are learning three surahs and they're still continuing their prayers. And they don't have any vesves as far as I see. They just continue. 
and they they hope that Allah will accept their prayer. But in another way, the pro being proud is also dangerous. This is maybe more dangerous than another one. Uh, so again, the 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 middle way or the the balance is really plays significant role in our lives. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. So intention is really important here, uh, as you also suggested. You know, it, uh, a story just came to my mind. Uh, in the old days, uh, my grandmother, he, she passed away some time ago, but she was saying, uh, I did Hatim, meaning she read, read the entire Quran. Uh, and I, I, I didn't know. So, uh, so as far as I, I know, he didn't know how to read Arabic. So I asked my, my mom or my dad how she does Hatim. And then they told me she follows uh, his finger under every sentence, uh, under every verse, every line in the Quran. And he reads Surah Al-Ikhlas for every line in the Quran that he follows through with his finger. And he uh, you know, changes the, the, the pages of the Quran and who, who follows, uh, she follows all the pages. And then at the end, she says, I did Khatim of Quran. So it was so sweet to me, you know. She has an intention, even though you know she didn't read the Quran. She read only one surah, what she was able to memorize, and that was her intention. And inshallah, may Allah accept uh, his her intentions. Inshallah. Maybe Allah accepted uh, her intentions to read the whole Quran, even though she only knew one surah, uh, the shortest surah in Quran. Uh, and maybe there are other people that know the entire Quran in memorize in their heart, but maybe. They might not have a good intention, and Allah may not accept the way it is. So it's not the action that counts; it's the intention that counts. So also, this helps maybe to understand the importance of intention here uh, to get away from this vesvesa. So, uh, if is there any other point you want to add about this first cure, or I will go to the second cure? So I'm going to the second cure. Uh, the second cure, this is, there is no difficulty in religion. Yeah, we have a little bit talked about this. Since the four schools of law are true, and since realizing a fault which leads to the seeking of forgiveness is preferable for the person afflicted with Vesvese to seeing actions as good, which leads to pride, That is, it is better if such a person sees his actions as faulty and seeks forgiveness rather than considering it to be good and falling into pride. Since it is thus, throw away your vesvese and say to Satan. So that's what we were talking about, I guess. Uh, so this is what Ustad also points out. Uh, and in this, in this position, if such a person sees his actions as faulty and seeks forgiveness rather than considering it to be good and falling into pride. Since it is thus, throw away your vesvese and say to Satan, this state is a difficulty. It is difficult to be aware of the reality of things. It is contrary to the ease in religion expressed by there is no difficulty in religion. It is contrary to the principle religion is facility. And this is a hadith. Certainly such an action is conformable with the true school of law that is enough for me and at least by admitting my inability to perform the worship in a way worthy of it, it leads me to seek refuge with divine compassion through humbly beseeching forgiveness and to meekly supplicating that my faulty actions be accepted. Uh, so Colin Ojam, Would you like to uh, share your thoughts? Yeah, it reminds me of the time that someone told me many, many years ago that you can never be thankful enough to God. Even if you thank God 50 million times, you still haven't thanked him at all. And I misunderstood it. Um, and I, I, I thought that God can really never be thanked. So, you know, mm -hmm. what's the point of thanking if you can never thank him? 
because even if you thank 50 million times, you are still not going to give him what is due and what is worthy of him. But of course, I misunderstood the whole point. I was very, very young at the time. I misunderstood. What we have to understand is that God cannot be thanked, is showing his azama, is showing his greatness. Also, it's showing that, you know, we cannot reward God by thanking him. God cannot be rewarded. A thanks is a kind of a reward. You know, it's a kind of affirmation. God doesn't need to be affirmed. We need the affirmation. We need to thank. This is where I, I made a big mistake. I need to thank Allah. Allah doesn't need to be worshipped, you know. And if we were to say that you cannot worship God in a way that would be worthy of him, then that's true. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't worship. It, exactly. means, that, it means that he doesn't need your worship. You need it. You know, exactly. when you go to a doctor and the doctor tells you, uh, you know, you have to take this medication, you don't say to the doctor, well, why do you need me to take this medication? The doctor doesn't need you to take the medication. You need to take it. So, you know, God cannot be thanked. God cannot be worshipped. But we need to thank. We need to worship. And I exactly. got this. I got I got a memory of this, this scenario uh, in reading this um this, this second uh, cure here, because when we make uh, Ibadah difficult, then it's going against the whole point. The whole point is to submit. If submission is going to be so difficult that you don't want to submit, then we've misunderstood it. Submission to Allah should be the easiest thing for us, actually, because we're submitting to one rather than submitting to many. You know, if you don't worship Allah, you worship everything. And you have to submit to everything. You have to be scared of everything. You have to beware everything. And that is very, very tiresome. To, admi to admit and to submit to Allah is ease. There should be ease. And if there isn't, there's a problem. We're not doing it correctly. This is why Ustad is saying here, he's, he's focusing on there is no difficulty in religion. Religion shouldn't be a hard obstacle course, you know. There is, a, there is um, in, in, in jurisprudence, in fiqh, there is um, a section of fiqh called shakyat, which is to do with doubts. And it tells you, if you doubt, for example, that you've done one rakat too many, or you haven't done enough rakat in, uh, in your prayer, what you should do if there is a doubt in between the second rakat and the third rakat, or between the third raka and the fourth raka, it tells you about this. And then it says in this section of jurisprudence, it says the doubts of someone who doubts a lot should be disregarded completely. And that person is known as kathiru shak, someone who doubts too much. So the mm -hmm. doubts of someone who doubts too much must be misregarded, disregarded, because obviously it's waswasa. So Excess doubt comes from this um, false perspective, actually, seeing the world in the wrong way, seeing uh, religion as being difficult, seeing the actions as being inherently good, seeing yourself as someone who can be perfected and therefore being becoming perfectionist. All of these are um, all of these bring doubt into the into the equation. And, and really, we have to be very careful. Because when we start to doubt, and we have multiple doubts, and we become excessive in our doubt, kathir shak, then it's very, very difficult. It's, it's a disease, you know, it's a psychological disease, and we have to beware. Yes, uh, this, you know, you, you suggested, you said, uh, the, uh, it's submission, the worship is about, the ibadah is about submission to Allah, and the core of submission is to uh, accept your weakness. The core of submission is to understand and manifest your weakness to Allah. Absolutely. And so if we are weak, we cannot, we can never be perfect in any way, even in the, in the case of worship. Uh, yeah, that's a very good point, Kordon Hujam. Jazakallah. Uh, Harun Hujam, uh, what's your thing, take? Uh, thank you very much for this uh, point of view. I liked it very much, to, I mean, to relate uh, easiness or facility the word here uh, to to relate this word with submitting to one so oneness of uh, of Allah 
I think this is an excellent point. So submitting to one should be really easy, you know, logically. So since we need to submit to the one, uh, it should be really easy. So if we don't see easiness in anything religion offers, that's again our problem. Most likely we are uh, we are searching something in the wrong place, or we are trying to just make things hard on on ourselves for several reasons. And as you mentioned. Um, this is most likely from the perspective that I need to perfect my situation. I need to perfect my worship. I need to uh, do things better. So this is already a wrong path or wrong perspective. Uh, so once we understand that we are really weak, important, full of odds, then this gives us a way, you know, to seek for forgiveness. And I um, want to extra mention this forgiveness. So it looks like Allah, you know, there's something like uh, it's it's the verse meaning um, if a society is not, you know, doing mistakes, then, you know, Allah would demolish this society and would create a new society who would make mistake. So that's to tell us that, you know, we are really faulty created uh, beings, you know, and we are faulty. We, we will make mistakes for several reasons. The point is Allah wants us to seek refuge, to seek just for uh, his forgiveness. If we take this point, then uh, we will not try to perfect anything. We will just try to submit and we will just try to seek for forgiveness right away. Yeah, I, rem I, I remember uh, we were reading 11th word from before this uh, chapter. And I, I just reminded a, a, pa a text, an Arabic text in that chapter it was saying, Subhanaka ma arafnaka hakka ma'rifetika ya ma'ruf. Or another version says, Subhanaka ma shakarnaka hakka shukruka ya meshkur. So, O oh Allah, that we, you know, uh, worship, we can never worship enough. Uh, that's a dua that we make. Uh, I can, I think the, the source of that text was a hadith. Uh, if I, uh, I don't know if you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, so, this idea is really important. Whenever what in which way we pray, we worship Allah, we will never be fully able to worship him and to, you know, to claim, uh, to affirm the state of us being, you know, not ab being able to, inability to perform enough uh, worthy of his bounties is also another sweetness of uh, being a worshiper, as you all suggested, uh, and seeking forgiveness for our shortcomings in worshiping Allah is also another sweetness of Iman uh, and uh, as you know you also affirmed Harun Rajam uh, you know worshiping to one is really uh, the core of this you know there is only one God Allah that we only pray to him and this is the easiest way and the you know the, the calming uh, it's a calming uh, you know understanding of Islam uh, it, you, you were also mentioning that we can never uh, worship enough to Allah I, I just reminded uh, you know Ustad says uh, for every praise for every shukur we make we need to make another shukur for the shukur we made prior to it exactly so, yeah you know being able to uh, thank Allah is uh, a nima in and of itself uh, so it's an infinite infinite loop, right? Yeah, there's it's an infinite loop. loop. Yeah. yeah, exactly. There's an infinite loop. Because uh, the iman that's given to us, that gives us the ability to thank Allah, is also another bounty, maybe the, the most important bounty we have. So it's an infinite loop, as you said. Uh, so we have to accept this state and understand it, and, and uh, we should be aware of it. Then that may uh, take us away from this vesvese. The alternative is to think like a Mutazilite and then say, well, I'm not going to worship because I can't, I can never worship Allah, uh, even with one dua. So why should I try, you know? So mm -hmm. if a Mutazilite really is, is true to his or her beliefs, they should give it up. And in fact, this is what they did with the issue of the names of Allah. They said Allah cannot be named. And then they made ta'til in the names of Allah. They said Allah doesn't have names. You know, so it becomes ridiculous. 
um, you know, the, the, the alternative, it's not all or nothing, you know. You can't say, I'm going to worship Allah, I'm only going to worship him if I can worship him perfectly because he is worthy of my perfect worship. You cannot worship him perfectly. You can't do anything perfectly. <laughs> so, you know, it doesn't mean you shouldn't try. You have to do what you can do with what you've been given. Just because, you know, uh, you, you, you don't stop taking medicine because you're not going to live forever. You know you're going to die one day, but that doesn't mean you should stop taking your medicine now, you know, because you know exactly. you can never cure yourself of death. So these are crazy ideas, but actually they are a sort of logical corollary of Mutazilite uh, perspective. If you take them to their supposedly logical conclusion, that's what you would end up believing. So we have to be careful that we are not, um, we're not believing in a Mutazilite way. Yes, Can I ask right. a question at this point, actually? Um, Please. When, when, when you said, Colin Hojan, because of, you know, trying to perfect actions, just, let's say, Muta's late uh, point of view um, just does not act because I will not be able to, to perform the best prayer, let me not to pray, you know, because my prayer, you know, will not be, you know, as, as good to reach Allah. So is this the same as... Um, trying to perfect my prayer. Because here in this Vesvese, a person in this condition is trying to perfect his prayer, right? But uh, also there is another option, as you mentioned, because of this perspective, I'm not going to perfect my prayer. I'm not going to pray at all because there is no prayer that I can offer to Allah, which is the best yeah. prayer. Yeah. yeah, this is what Shaitan tells us to do. You know, Shaitan gives us this, this, this is Waswasa of Shaitan, saying, well, you can never pray properly, uh, so why are I mean, you are, trying? Are, are, yeah. <laughs> are these two options in, 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 of the same kind, although they are different actions? I, I think you're right. I think they are two, you know, it's like two ends of the same string. You know, they look as though they're different, but actually they belong to the same piece of string. There is also, you know, we are, we are discussing this in an intellectual level, uh, sort of, but there, this is, there is also a psychological element to this, all, all this, right? Even though we don't think this way or we don't, you know, uh, understand it uh, as, as, you know, comprehensively as it is described here, but sometimes people psychologically fall into this state, even if they are not aware of it, uh, they might get exhausted and they're trying hard and it doesn't work and then they just, you know, think they just, you know, gonna give up. And maybe, especially in this generation, uh, Muslims in the West or, you know, in, in pretty much any, anywhere in the world now, the, the new generation, they have kind of uh, this problem. Uh, some people, especially the young generation, as I said, uh, having problem with uh, worshiping Allah because they see themselves, uh, you know, uh, so you know, dirty, let's say, you know, uh, they, you know, they're not able to do it, so they don't even try. I think Hiram Hojama has, has um, he, he's landed on something really important when he said these are two, two expressions of the same thing. This is from Anna. Anna wants to be perfect. And yet, if it can't be perfect, it says, I'm not going to try then, I'm not going to do it. I remember when at school, I was very good in some subjects. And in those subjects that I, I couldn't really do very well, I never tried because I thought I'm never going to do it. I'm not going to be able mm -hmm. to do it. So why should I expose my Anna to, to humility by not being able to do it? You know, now I can, I can, in a sense, psychoanalyze myself and say, this was Anna. Mm -hmm. Anna wants to be perfect at it. And if you can't be perfect at it, you don't want to be exposed as imperfect. So you don't do it. You give it up. You stop it. Uh, and I, I, a lot of children do that, you know, if they can't, and this comes down, I think, to having the wrong kind of encouragement from parents, parents, when, you know, they tell their children that they're, oh, you're brilliant at everything, you're brilliant at this, you're brilliant at that, we have to be very careful, because, you know, if children get, it doesn't mean we should tell children, you can never be brilliant at everything, but we shouldn't give them false hope, because there will be some things that they can't do. And they must always try. And, and whenever I thought that I'm not going to be good at this, then I would give up trying. And that actually is Anna. And it's what uh, Harun said. It's this, these are two expressions of the same 
truth, but they seem to be different. One seems to be humble, the other one seems to be very, very hubristic, very, very proud, but they're both the same, actually. So it all comes back to the, the problem of ego, Anna, right? Yeah. Oh, it's all down to Anna, definitely. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we arrived at it, yeah. <laughs> you know what the frightening thing is, is that the only, the only scholar who talks about Anna in, in, in a way that is understandable and practicable is, is Ustad Nusi. No one else discusses Anna, and this makes me quite scared. I'm thinking, you know, we have this treasure, we're sitting on this treasure, you know, with Risale, because these very foundational issues are discussed. Um, and how can you teach about Islam if you don't have a correct understanding of Anna? Because you're always mm -hmm. going to be teaching that you can perfect yourself, as some people do, you know. They say that to, to be a good Muslim is to become more like Allah. Because they misunderstand this تَخَلَّقُوا بِأَخْلَاقِ اللَّهِ You know, take on the attributes of Allah. They think that actually, yes, I can polish my, 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 my nafs and make it good. But this is such, uh, um, uh, uh, how can I say, it's such satanic trickery. And only understanding Anna will solve this problem. And we have to be very, very thankful that we have this um, Risala, really. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, so uh, there is the discussion uh, uh, on the chat going on. I Sorry, I'm not able to follow up as much as, as I should, maybe. Uh, there is also a mention of a uh, manifestation of the names of Allah, uh, referring to Kolin Hocam also. Yeah, so somebody called Water, I don't know who he is, but or she is. Uh, Sure. I'd like Hello, to know who this brother is called Water. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think Water is Mehmet Su, right? So, yeah. Oh, Su, yeah, Su of course. Uh, okay, <laughs> Water. I understand him from his writings. You know. Ah, but, uh, well spotted. <laughs> so, let me read a couple lines here as well. So, he's trying to, you know, join as well. Alhamdulillah for having and sharing their wisdoms. God sees himself in our actions. God gives us a saik, a motive to do something, but we do not know that saik is a great way of his Esma's reflections. We think that we do those, we own those attributes and Esma's, but in reality we temporarily hold them. This is emanet. Yeah, that's exactly the case. Alhamdulillah for having and experiencing this wisdom. Kulina uh, a great perspective. And your thank, yeah, we, we talked about this. Your thank needs to thank as Allah gave the power to thank him. Yes, that's, we also discussed this. We keep our one eye open for an hour. We will lose the, the eye and we will be blind. Even if for one eye, we cannot pay the price. Almost everyone pays the electric bill or gas bill. But Allah warms you and enlightens you for free nimas. Bounties cannot be calculated. They are limitless. Yes, exactly. Uh, so I don't want to go on to the next chapter as... We only have five more minutes, uh, and we can we, we will not be able to finish that chapter, I think. Uh, so we can, you know, maybe have a couple more you know, sentences and close up for this week. I, I uh, had a we, question we... actually. Sorry, no, please. Uh, it's a question to anyone. Um, we've understood that that we. Um, should understand that there is there is no difficulty in religion and that we are weak and that we can't always uh, we can't worship Allah as is worthy of him uh, because we are weak because we are deficient is this also um, not open to a certain danger that we may start to make excuses you know oh I can't do it because I'm just a weak and deficient human being you know mm -hmm. it, it may stop us from trying so again, we have to, I think, balance it. Yes. It shouldn't lead us to become complacent and become lazy and say, oh, you know, I just poor me, I'm weak. And, you know, again, that's Anna, I think, isn't it? Isn't it using it as, an, as a pretext, as an excuse? Is that not a danger? Yeah, Harun Yeah, I think that's an excellent point. 
um, obviously, yes, I, I would say yes, it's a danger too. So looks like it comes to the dynamism. Again, we should be very dynamic in anything. And I think the summa is kind of the balance. Uh, we have some advices from the Prophet, from the Quran, you know, from verses. But we see balance. Sometimes it ask, asks us to be kind. But for some situations, it maybe asks us to be harsh, you know. So we cannot take one, uh, one or the other one. So we, we should take both of uh, conflicting or opposite, you know, advices from the Sunnah and Quran so that uh, our acts are balanced in any case. And what I understand, whatever it is, we should, I mean, whatever we do, it should take us to the climate of uh, feeling weak and seeking for forgiveness. Maybe that's the truth. Whatever I do, it should take me to, to, to this position. If I'm in, in an otherwise position, I think I, I should be doing something wrong. Uh, I just remind, uh, remember, you know, uh, I guess this is the best way of looking at things. It's it's going back to the sunnah, the, the life of the Prophet Muhammad wasalam. And we see there are a lot of different sahabas in, uh, during his time. And uh, some are more uh, towards worshipping Allah in the best way possible. They stay awake for the, for the whole night and they fast during the day. And, you know, there are stories. Uh, of different Sahaba, and there are other Sahabas that come to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and he says, you know, uh, I believe in in Allah, and I love you, and what else should I do? And Prophet Muhammad gives some advices to those Sahaba, you know, simple advices, and then he takes it, and he says, I will do exactly what you say, and I won't do anything more than that. And he said, that's enough for you, Prophet Muhammad says. And but <laughs> there, there are other Sahabas, you see, and they they try. Uh, and then a, a wife comes up, a wife, one of the Sahabas of, you know, wife of the, that Sahaba comes up to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and she says, she complains, she never comes to the bed at night. And Prophet Muhammad, you know, talks to him and says, you know, you should, you know, uh, share your time with your wife and your kids and your family. Uh, you know, you have to have a balance. So I think the, the best example uh, is... Uh, to see the Sraat al-Mustaqim is to go and back to the life of the Prophet Muhammad and the Sahaba. I, I like the idea, also Harun's idea of dynamism, you know, of, you know, we have to go according to situations um, and not be not be complacent. And I know that the Prophet ﷺ would tell some of the Sahabas to get their hair cut and others, he would see that, that they had long hair and that he would say nothing. So, you know, it's all different, you know, there is a difference, there is an inherent difference in dynamism. Um, mm -hmm. Not everyone believes in the same way, not everyone is oriented towards the same things, not everyone is intellectually, um, uh, not everyone is an intellectual, you know, some mm -hmm. people are very vocational, some people are good with their hands, uh, some people like onions, other people don't, um, you know, <laughs> we are different. Uh, and yes. so that should also be taken into consideration. We shouldn't expect everyone uh, to give us the same kind of responses. Mm -hmm. You know, um, everyone is different because everyone reflects Allah's names and attributes in different ways. Exactly. It wouldn't be any good if everyone was exactly the same. We wouldn't be able to understand difference. Yes. So somebody from Lighthouse for Humanity is raising hand. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, it came to my mind regarding the question of uh, Kol Najam, uh, <clears throat> the, the danger uh, which uh, can arise uh, from the, uh, the difficulty uh, which is uh, yeah, coming coming up from the yeah the the, the west of Shaitan. Uh, I uh, the last part uh, it came to my mind. Maybe we can uh, especially focus on that part. Uh, it means of. It may be a means of taking refuge with the uh, the uh, the rahmah of Allah SWT, rahmat ilahiyah through humbly beseeching forgiveness, through meekly supplicating that my faulty actions be accepted. So, uh, as uh, as in the mentioned in the chat, our intentions are important. Allah SWT is yeah, treating us according to our intentions and uh, making it a means of yeah uh, seeking. Forgiveness of Allah, attracting the mercy of Allah SWT. 
uh, of course, we are all uh, always we, we must be in the balance of uh, half and raja between the fear and uh, hope uh, balance. Uh, we cannot be always uh, hopeful. Uh, I am saved, and uh, or at, on the other extreme, uh, I am uh, I am yeah, uh, doomed. So we must be in balance always, uh, seeking the forgiveness of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, not uh, cutting our uh, hope from the mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Yes, in balance, inshallah. Yeah, that's a yeah great point. Jazakallah, Jazmabe, for raising that. Uh, so this was a very beautiful, bountiful discussion. Uh, we benefited a lot from both Qurin Abis and Harun Abis and Jizm Abis points. And thank you for the contributions from the chat, uh, Mehmet Su Abi and other Abis as well. Uh, so let's finish here. Uh, anybody wants to add anything at this point? No, okay. So I will finish up here. Uh, thank you for all contributions. Uh, hope to see you after the Eid. So next week we will have Eid, so we don't have any discussion. Uh, we have Kurban Bayramı with Adha, uh, and we might have a discussion the following week, or we might also uh, postpone to another week. Uh, so we don't. You're not sure for that particularly. Kolin uh, Hocam, also we still. Inshallah, hope you will be fully recovered as inshallah. soon as possible. Uh, hope to see you, inshallah, for, uh, in the future. Subhanaka la ilmanana illa ma alamtana innaka antal alimin hakim wa akhir da'ahuna alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Allah rizazi için al-fatiha.